How many times can I say powdery in a sentence? And I will be a happy little frag head. It's heart achingly beautiful, this fragrance. You'll be fine, don't worry. Welcome back. Today, I wanna to do a fairly easygoing video. Uh, I just really wanna talk about some fragrances that I've been really enjoying wearing lately. And they span a vast spectrum of perfume styles. So it's really interesting because I'm not just sticking to sort of one style of fragrance at the moment. Over the past month or so, since getting back from our holiday, I have been wearing a sort of condensed range of fragrances, I would say, with the exception of what I'm sampling. But within that little condensed package of fragrances that I've been really gravitating to, uh, I feel like there's quite a lot of diversity in the fragrances themselves. So I just thought I'd do a little video sharing this with you. And I, I am aware that this poor plant <laughs> is in desperate need of some water. And don't worry, that will be rectified immediately upon me finishing this video. You'll be fine, don't worry. Let's just get into the video. So first of all, there has been a fragrance that has somewhat eluded me for several years now. It is one that I tried, I think back in 2018, and I really enjoyed it then. And I didn't buy it then because even back then it was pretty pricey so I still put it off and put it off and then it became a little bit hard to find and then it got discontinued well the rumor was that it got discontinued but I recently had a notification from Selfridges which said that it had come back in stock which was quite a shock because I thought I was never going to see it again and this is a Benjuan Bohème by Diptyque I have been through a 10 mil decant of this uh, which I bought through somebody in the Facebook groups and I've previous to that I'd been through several samples of it and the thing that sort of prevented me from buying this originally when I had the easy opportunity to get it was that it, it can disappear on me but I have found since wearing it recently that it actually lasts fairly well on me it doesn't necessarily project a lot but I do find that I can still detect it after several hours of wear. So whether it's just because I pay more attention to my fragrances now and how they're wearing on me, uh, possibly because of having this YouTube channel, or whether it's because I have been a little bit more diligent with my skincare routine, because I know that having my skin in good condition means that my fragrances wear better as well. But in any case, uh, it, it seems to be doing a lot better on me than it has in previous years when I have sampled it. What I like about this one is it is effectively an amber fragrance and I really love amber fragrances, as you probably already know, uh, but it has a, a bit of a dry spiciness to it. And, um, and I've always associated with benzoin in fragrances as being sort of a little bit vanillic leaning. And whilst this does have a bit of sweetness to it, it's not crazy sweet and it doesn't smell artificial. And it just, it's so airy and ethereal for an amber fragrance. You know, I mean, usually I, I associate words like ethereal and airy with, I don't know, maybe florals or white masks and things like that, but very rarely ambers. But this just is so beautiful. It's, it's heart achingly beautiful, this fragrance. I actually really find this to be extremely transportive. Um, or is it transportative? Transportive, let's go with that. It, feel, it takes me back to a different time. Um, it's a little bit moody, but it's not too moody. The theme for this fragrance is meant to be bohemian and I do find it has a bohemian vibe to it. I feel like I get lots of um, warm browns and earthy tones coming to mind when I think of this fragrance and maybe even slightly more on the moody side of that spectrum with a little bit more, you know, shadow. Uh, anyway, so that's Benjoin Bohème and I'll get to it soon, but I have actually been effectively layering this. I've been wearing it on its own, but I have been layering it a lot with other things as well. So which brings me to my next fragrance, which is an oldie but a goodie in my wardrobe. I 
I love this fragrance, but I hardly ever wear it. And I don't know why, but I have pulled it out recently, which is really odd because this is something that I would normally wear in the dead of winter. And, you know, we're in spring, but it has been up and down. We've had still had some cooler weather, uh, some rainy days, and it feels like the weather sometimes can't decide if it's getting warm or not. Thanks, Fritz, for knocking the camera. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, rambling on, but this is Grand Soir by Maison Francis Kirkshan. Oh, man, I can't tell you how many samples I went through of this. And I remember I, I really hoarded them too, because this again is not an inexpensive fragrance to buy. And I love smelling it because it takes me back to the time when I was sampling this. I, I just, even after I bought the bottle, I hoarded it because I didn't want to use it up too quickly. I, I just really love this fragrance. And I know some people find it to be a little bit masculine leaning. I find it to be quite spicy and a little bit aromatic in the opening as well, but that's what I like about it. And then it dries down into this really warm, fluffy, vanillic uh, amber. And I, I just, I, I just really love it. But I actually, the opening to me is the best part of this whole fragrance. So I have been wearing this and I have been layering it with Benjuan Bohème. And I just really enjoy this combination. I don't know if Benjuan Bohème has um, like a myrrh in it, but I don't know, I just feel like I get that from this, but it doesn't seem to be listed in the notes. So I could be completely off base there, but this has a, a darkness about it. Whereas this one, even though the juice is darker, it, it actually feels lighter and it has more of a density to it in the wear. And it definitely has that enveloping, fluffy thickness to it, wooliness to it, but it doesn't, it somehow feels lighter in tone and color when I compare it to what I get with this one. Anyway, I don't know, maybe I'm just rambling, but I really get quite distinctive color tones in my mind when I smell these fragrances. And I just love how they go together. The other fragrance that I have been wearing a lot lately, which is a little bit out of season again for this one, is Tolu by Ormond Jane. Another amber fragrance. This one is based around Tolu balsam and it does have a more resinous feel to it. So it is still sweet. It definitely has a, a vanillic tone to it as well, but not nearly as vanillary as the Grand Soir. But like I said, this one is more resinous. It's not as sweet, I don't think, as the Grand Soir, but it also has almost a, you can imagine a stickiness to it. You can almost imagine the resin seeping out of a tree or something but as it dries down it becomes a lot more powdery and it changes quite a bit on my skin the, the scent profile itself smells very similar throughout the wear but i just find that maybe in the opening it's a little bit more resinous and spicy but then it dries down into a more softer more powdery ambery tone i think that powderiness is generated by the presence of tonka in this fragrance and I really do feel like I get hit with that tonka, but it's not as gourmand as it might come across in other fragrances. And it doesn't come across as almond-like either. It's definitely a distinct tonka powder. And then there's also a sort of an aromatic tone to this as well, a, a green aromatic, I mean, green herbal aromatic tone, like, like dry green herbs. It's so interesting and so unique. And I just wish our weather was cooler throughout the year so that I could enjoy it more because when that powder hits you, it can be really intense if you overdo it on this one. Well, for me, it is anyway. And I think the powderiness coupled with a bit of dryness just means that it can get a little bit choky in the warmer weather. And I think our, our weather here throughout the year is just too warm to enjoy wearing this fragrance liberally i uh, when i wear it i i do limit it to, to one or two sprays and that's it but i do absolutely adore it and i i love to take this with me when i'm traveling 
if I'm going somewhere that has a cooler climate. This is always one of the first things I reach for if I know I'm going somewhere cold. And so again, I also have been layering this with Benjoin Bohème and Grand Soir. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, I layered this with both of those at the same time and I thought I smelled amazing all day long. Just saying. The next one is one that I picked up from the Facebook groups when I got back from holidays. I had smelled the more recent version of this in the duty-free stand at the airport and I really enjoyed that but I can't say that I can accurately describe it at this time. I need to revisit it again to be able to, to give you a little bit of a, a I guess a review of that just primarily because uh, I was not 100% well when I was going through the airport and uh, I, I just don't feel like I really got to experience the fragrance, the new version of this fragrance in its fullest capacity. So um, I'm not going to make any comparisons to the new version, but when I saw this one come up, uh, I, I decided to, uh, to jump on it, even though I knew it wasn't going to smell the same as the new one. So this is J'adore L'Or, uh, Essence de Parfum. And this is the old Francois de Marquis. I'm so sorry, I just butchered that. Uh, so this one, was really interesting. When I first, when it first arrived in the mail, I, it obviously hadn't been sprayed for a while. So whoever bought it, it's a full bottle. So whoever bought it, obviously sprayed it maybe once or twice and then put it away and forgot about it. And uh, when I first sprayed it, it was super, super powdery. And I thought oh, that is so interesting because that is not what I expected at all. I was expecting, you know, juicy, creamy, tropical white florals. Uh, so this obviously was a blind buyer because you, I don't think you can get this in the department store anymore. And that was partly what drew me to it really. I saw it come up and I thought, can't get that anymore. Um, I knew who the perfumer was and I thought, uh, I think I might just wanna have a look at that, you know? Um, I haven't worn it. I wore it for a few days when it first arrived and I haven't really worn it again since. And that's not because I haven't enjoyed it. It's just because I've been wearing all of these ambers and another combination which has just floored me, um, So, I'll, which I will get to shortly. But this one, this one has um, a bit of jasmine in it. And I, I have to admit, when I smell it out of the atomizer, especially now since I have spritzed it a few times, I should also add that it's not as powdery. The second time I wore it, it didn't smell as powdery because I think the second time I wore it, um, I wasn't spraying stuff that had been sitting in the atomizer for a while. Uh, so it did, it does still dry down. It does have a powdery dry down to this, uh, but it wasn't, it's never been as powdery as that very first wear. And possibly my brain might be playing tricks on me as well. I might just be thinking it was more powdery because I wasn't expecting it to be powdery at all. But there is a powdery element. How many times can I say powdery in a sentence? So this, uh, the white floral in this one is predominantly jasmine. And I'm not that familiar with the J'adore line. So I don't even know if for the rest of them that's the same, whether they are all jasmine dominant or whether... Uh, there's a tuberose element in the other ones or I don't know. I just, I haven't really, I don't know why. I, the marketing, I, I think, never really hit the right spot for me. So with this fragrance. And so I never really paid much attention to it. But this one comes across as being quite ambery. It's, it's quite dense. It does have a little bit of a vintage vibe. And Corrine from Olfactive Stories, literally about, a week or so after I had bought this one, she posted a video talking about this exact fragrance. And I thought that was really cool. We're obviously on the same scent journey for the last couple of months, even though we're in completely opposite sides of the world and different seasons. <laughs> and I think she actually did a really great job of describing this fragrance. So highly recommend going check. Oh, if I can find that particular video, it was just one of her monthly recap this is what I've been wearing videos and uh, like much like this one 
and yeah she talked about this in that video so I'll see if I can find a link to that video and link it for you but this one has an ambery base to it there's a bit of labdanum in it and so it does come across a little bit resinous it's quite a potent fragrance it's not I don't find this at all citrusy and I think in my mind I'd always imagined the other Jadors being sort of white florals maybe jasmine with some citrus and being really sparkly and bright this is not that this is much more of a vintage feel a lot denser a lot more ambery uh, a little bit powdery in the dry down and I, I have to say I, I actually really really love this and so it'll be interesting now that I'm fully recovered and I'm feeling much better to go in and store and try the newer version, the Maison Francis Kirkjian version and just compare them because I have a feeling this is quite different to what I've heard the new one being described as. And I don't know why they would call it the same thing if they're both called Law, although this one is called Essence de Parfum. Anyway, so I don't know why they'd call it the same thing. It is so confusing. The only way I could tell the difference when I was sort of looking it up online was the cap is different. So interesting angle for Dior to take. But anyway, uh, and I apologize, the planes have started. It's the afternoon and uh, I know I shouldn't film in the afternoon because there's always planes. Anyway, so that was J'adore Lure. I've just been wearing this on its own. I just absolutely love it. It lasts all day and I, I, I'm really pleased with this purchase. This next one is very special because I bought this on holiday. I bought this from a little place called St Paul de Vence and I just love that place and every time I wear this now I think of walking around that little village in fact I think of the trip in general because once I bought it I pretty much wore it exclusively until the second last day this is Fleur de Rain by Maison Godet this is a tuberose dominant fragrance it's quite sweet which is a surprise given how much I love it. I mean, they had some beautiful fragrances in their line. Uh, they had a really fantastic Shepra, which I was so close to buying. But on the day, this was the one that I just couldn't get out of my head. And I just thought, I have to get this one, even though this is not the scent profile that I would typically gravitate towards. I did buy the the other one which is more jazz I can't remember the name of it right now but it's the other one is more jasmine dominant but that one I think is more nighttime more formal leaning whereas this one I feel like I'm wear anytime and is much more if this is very very much a crowd pleasing scent this one. This does not smell like a typical tuberose fragrance. If you're not a tuberose lover then I guess it depends on what you don't like about the tuberose but if you aren't a tuberose lover typically then this might be an interesting one to smell because it doesn't have I guess that indolic feel it doesn't have a bubblegummy feel uh, it also isn't sharply green like some tuberose fragrances are this is coupled with iris and um, I think there's mimosa and there's another floral but I can't remember off the top of my head what the other floral is. And so the mimosa, I think, helps to give it this creaminess. And then the base is really woody, but it's not a heavy wood. So it's sandalwood and cedarwood, I think. So they're, they're quite, it's woody, but it, it's not super dry. You're not, not picking it up necessarily as being super dry and woody and heavy. And it just creates this beautiful scent bubble around you it is also quite sweet there is a sweetness to it but as i said it's not bubble gummy but i wonder if there is a, there is something in here that just feels like it's an added note that gives it sweetness but it also changes the scent profile of the tuberose a bit but i just i don't know what it is i've never smelled a tuberose quite like this it is just it's so pretty and i I know that's really lame because I'm supposed to explain to you what it smells like, but it's very airy. It is a sweetness to it. Uh, yes, there's tuberose there, but it's rounded out with these other florals and those woods in the base. And I feel like there is a slight green tone to this in the opening, but it's not, it's not sappy greenness. It's not grassy green. 
but it's just it's just a freshness about it which is really really nice the only thing i'll say is if if the reason you don't like tuberose is because you don't like fragrances that are really heady then this probably won't be for you because i do feel like this has quite a heady perfume bubble that it creates and it's not just the tube rose, it's obviously a combination with the other florals as well. Um, I mean, I can, I can very liberally douse myself in this and I will be a happy little frag head, but not everyone would want to do that, I don't think, because it, it, the, the scent bubble can be quite, quite heady. And I did wear this to a conference a couple of weeks ago and did my usual spritz it all over I, I think i got into the habit of dousing myself so much with this because when i was wearing it on holiday i wanted it to last all day and we were outdoors walking around looking at monuments and stuff so i really did go to town and it seems to be like that spray routine has been ingrained in me when it comes to this fragrance anyway i wore it to this conference and i i, I told myself next time back off on it a little bit because i when i sat down I went into a lecture theatre and I sat down next to a couple of people and no one said anything, but I was very conscious that like <laughs> this bubble was just, if the bubble had been visible, I literally just would have been sitting in a cloud. That my bad, my bad. Uh, I accept full responsibility for that. Uh, I won't do it again, but yeah, this one I have been absolutely loving and I, I had to force myself to stop wearing it for a bit because I mean, it's not a huge, it's not a huge dent, but, um, and it certainly doesn't look like it because the bottle expands outwards as it goes up. But I have a feeling that if this was just a normal rectangular bottle, I've probably used maybe a quarter. I'm not sure. The one thing I will say is I love the atomizers on these bottles. This, the mist that this creates is just so fine i just love everything about it okay i love it i love this fragrance i love the brand uh, can't wait to explore the other fragrance a little bit more and i just wish they were easier to source in australia they will ship internationally but the shipping is really really expensive so um, if you ever get to St Paul de Vence or if you ever stumble across a perfumery that stocks Maison Godet, then I highly recommend stopping and having a sniff. Okay, so the last two that I will talk about, this one, I, one of these I also bought overseas. I bought it in Florence. This is Liri by Santa Maria Novella and you can see I something that I've only owned for a few weeks uh, it has got a little bit of a dent in it this is a really lovely iris fragrance I think that for people who struggle with iris or oris in perfumes and they find them too heavy too powdery too waxy too dense and suffocating this might be a gateway iris for you because this is so light and airy uh it's not hasn't got a huge amount of sweetness to it either it smells like a really natural rooty sort of iris without being too dense or too earthy and i don't find this to be in fact i'll spray it on now and i don't find this to be particularly powdery either in fact when i looked up I think I looked up the notes the other day because I was curious to know. I should move this forward tonight. I, when I looked it up the other day because I was thinking, is there citrus or something in here? I just don't know how they've managed to get effectively an, an Oris dominant fragrance to be so light and translucent and breathable. Actually, I think I do know. The obvious answer is probably that they've, they've blended it with musks instead of florals, maybe. And that would make sense because it also has a very clean, fresh feel to it. In fact, right after this video and after I've watered this plant, I am going to film a video on the fragrances that I like to wear when I want to feel fresh and clean because it has been requested a few times now and I still haven't gotten around to it. And this is going to be on that list, spoiler alert, because this smells very fresh and clean. 
it's not sugar it doesn't have a lot of sweetness to it so it feels very natural and um, lotion like in a way without being creamy memory card ran out so hopefully <laughs> hopefully it doesn't look too different uh, where was I yeah so this just has a very natural light breathable that's the word I want to use is breathable because it doesn't feel at all dense or heavy or overly powdery although there are powdery facets to it it is quite green as well and um, I don't know maybe a bit peppery or something there's something that really lifts it off the skin and gives it a bit of a, a dry spiciness I guess so that is Liri by Santa Maria Novella now I have in the last two weeks been non-stop wearing a combination of this with wait for it this this is Mongelan Floral I think I have ironically found my Mongelan now if you've watched my channel for any length of time you probably know I really struggle with Mongelan I love the scent profile of it but I just find it to be too sweet, too vanillic, and even the normal EDP, not, I'm not even talking about the intense, but the normal EDP I just find to be too sweet, and it smells like boiled fruit lollies to me. I don't know why, but that's how, I, that's the image that I get when I smell that, and then it, at least in the opening and then in the dry down when the, the fruity, maybe the fruity facets die away a little bit, it just, it's just, too much vanilla but I really really love the actual scent profile of that fragrance but I just wish it wasn't as sweet anyway stumbled across this one <laughs> uh, which ironically has now been discontinued so it's not that easy to find anymore but if you're like me and you actually really liked the scent profile of Mon Guerlain but you couldn't wear it because you just found it to be too sweet see if you can get your hands on Mon Guerlain Floral because this one has more of a fresh floral aspect to it they've cut right back on the vanilla which is probably why it wasn't as popular because I think the people who really love the original Mon Guerlain probably really love that vanillic sweetness of it whereas I much much prefer the slight sweetness that this has but with more of the floral aspect and I don't know if I'm imagining it because I mean I have been layering it with this a lot maybe I should just wear this on its own again for a, for a couple of wears just to re-familiarize myself with what it smells like just on its own but I feel like this might have a little bit of iris in it as well and that that iris well, I think the original also has iris in it but I think the iris comes forward more in this one in the dry down because it's not competing quite so much with that vanilla that was in the original. So I only have this tiny little 30ml bottle but I have absolutely been going to town with this over the last two weeks and I'm really sad that this has been discontinued. I think, I mean I don't think I can justify scrounging around trying to find a backup bottle of it but if I had been able to get my hands on a bigger bottle I probably would have so that I could have it for quite some time and not worry about running out so I, as I said I haven't really been wearing this on its own very much I typically am always layering it with the Liri because the Liri not being sweet and having a little bit more of that iris I think just goes so well with this and it just adds a bit of a lighter musky freshness to the Mon Guerlain. Anyway so those are the fragrances that I have been loving wearing over the last few weeks and again I was quite surprised at the range of scent profiles that I have been attracted to but I really have been gravitating back to these fragrances over and over and over again. I've, I fully anticipate that will change, of course, it always does. But let me know if you have been fixated on any particular fragrances or fragrance combinations. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Hi, little different.